So there's a two approaches to drawing or painting these days, and they both start with C. One has to do with copying, and one has to do with creating. And if you wish to create, you have to learn a lot of different skill sets that aren't required copying. Uh, copying is largely about shading. Uh, this is largely about creating. So most people think that they can draw a cube or a box and don't really need to train themselves, but they would be wrong because there's a procedure in doing this so that you don't get really distorted looking boxes. And what that procedure is, my first line was the height line, so that is the H line. My second line was the width line, so that's my W line. And the third line then becomes my depth line, or my D line. So your procedure really is the H W, D. Height, width, and depth. And it's very important to follow this procedure because what you're doing is this becomes your easiest line to judge because it's a straight vertical line. Your width line is the second easiest one to judge because it is not as acute an angle. I have this almost as, as acute, but this angle is not as acute as the depth line. So your depth line is always the most acute angle. So you just simply then close this in. And we're not going to be dealing with much perspective at this point. Uh, Perspective is useful, but it is it is a mathematical system and it is fallible. So there's one. So if we if we do another one over here, you know we, we want to know where where we start and where we end, just like we do everything else, and try to give yourself some some length on your on your pencil. Uh, Let's uh, let's make this uh, down view. Actually, I, I screwed up there. So this will be my width line, and this be, will be my depth line. So this is this becomes the more acute angle. In other words, your depth line is always your more acute angle. So here we once again. This paper, by the way, is a new paper from Fabriano. You know, Fabriano's been around for a long time. I really like that one so much. You know, don't re erase your mistakes. Your, your mistakes are your guide for your corrections. So, as you can see, these are, these are I know you get a little distortion from this camera angle, but these are reasonably uh, height line, width line. Depth line. Now you can do these freehand uh, if you want. You can you can get like a little spice, uh, those little square spice uh, containers, a Cormac spice container, and you can set these up on your drawing table. Of course, it's hard to get an underneath view, but you can do a, a bunch of uh, these views. Um, <clears throat> once again. Height line, width line, depth line.
Eighth line. Fifth line. Fifth line. The length doesn't have anything to do with it. It's the angle. The most acute angle is always your depth line. And the most acute angle, A C U T E, the most acute angle is really the most difficult to judge. So that's why we leave that to the to the end. So once again, H W D. Height with the depth. A few more here. Height, width, and depth. And this gives you some assurance that you're not going to get really strange looking little uh, uh, cubes. And we'll talk about how these are shaded, you know, to create the illusion of depth, or the illusion of form, you actually need these, you need a side, a top, and a bottom. You need the three uh, basic uh, planes to do that. And uh, <clears throat> uh, so your system here in, in my book is, uh, has to do with uh, cube being the mothership and everything else eliminated uh, uh, originating from the cube in other words I, if I have a idea of a, a pyramid that can that can fit in that cube like so You know, so all all other forms uh, are derived from the cube. Uh, hemispherical form would fit in there as well. So, uh, but let's just stay with these for a while. Height line, height line, fifth line, depth line. Remember to hold your pencil rather far out so that you can get a nice, fluid, confident looking line. Now, you, you are kind of envisioning a, a, a vanishing point out here to one side. Uh, just get a few more. Now I often do these with a uh, with an ink pen or a ballpoint pen uh, because uh, you can't make changes, so or you can't make them easy 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 anyway. So it kind of gives you a uh, builds up confidence in your line work, and. You know, you just need to be aware of where all these points are, and we're going point to point uh, in each case. And again, this is a paper by Fabriano. It's called um, 1264. And uh, the reason that it's called 1264 is that that's the year that Fabriano was uh, founded. Uh, this is a paper that was used by Michelangelo and many of the great artists of the Renaissance. So you need these freehand skills uh, and you also need this knowledge of uh, uh, a little off here. this knowledge of uh, of uh, form and geometry uh, if you're going to be creating as opposed to simply copying stuff you know the big the big misnomer out there is that 
uh, that you can learn to create through copy. And eventually you wake up one day and, and lo and behold, you, you know how to create. But uh, it's a different set of skills. Uh, it's a different mindset. So uh, one does not automatically lead to the other. So it helps really to talk yourself through this early on and just remember height line, width line, depth line. Height, width, or height, width, and depth. Height, width, and depth. And like I said, the length of the line is not what matters, it's the angle. Many people get confused if they think it has to do with the length. It really has to do with the angle. And, you know, getting back to our lesson that we had last week, we, we know that this, this is closest to us. And this has more pressure because it's closest to us. When it moves away, it gets lighter. It's closest to us. And uh, height. Width and these should feel like they're slightly converging, and you can decide where this ends over here if you want. And depth, we're looking down on this quite a bit, not too much, or it's going to look distorted. So this is uh, uh, 1264 drawing, and as you can see, it has a nice uh, finish. Now this has a little uh, bit of, uh, of uh, Conte-like material in it because it's the Lumograph black. But as you can see, it erases, which is this little eraser here. Uh, it erases pretty well. If it were a graphite pencil, it would erase even better. But, you know, a good drawing paper uh, erases rather easily, but um, we don't use uh, uh, the procedure of erasing. We'll talk about that at some point. We, we don't use that as a uh, method to correct our drawings. What we use erasing for is part of the drawing process. It's a subtractive part of the drawing process. But you have to think about it. it's part of your part of your process. So that should give you the uh, whole idea of uh, height, width, and depth, and uh, uh, how you are really always thinking of point, line. That's your height, and you have your plane your width plane, and then you have your depth plane, then you have your top plane, in this case, and then you have your form, you have a cube. So it's point, line, plane, plane, and then when you fill this in, uh, now you have a form. So that's how you create form. Um, this is a, a very form related way of working and not a shape related working way of working and uh, 
when you're working with shapes and copying shapes, that's the copying method. When you're creating forms, uh, that is the creative method. You're, you're in, in control of your subject matter. Uh, if you go to most art textbooks, there's a, a gentleman by the name of Luca Gim, Gimbasso, uh, who is a Gambiasso, I guess. Luca Gambiasso, who is a, a Renaissance uh, draftsman, and he builds all of his figures out of these kinds of block forms. So there we have that lesson, and there's your homework for this week. Uh, enjoy. <laughs>